Hey, hello everyone, welcome back to another episode with your uh, friendly dietitian JJ. So I am going to talk today about essential oils. So I'm just going to do an introduction today and tell you a little bit about essential oils and then look out for the next videos where I will be talking a bit more specifically about the individual essential oil. There is an extremely long list of essential oils and there are so many out there that you can get. <clears throat> So for me, my first line is always to look at what you are eating. So prevention is better than cure. So if you can prevent something, if you can live a healthy life so that you don't get sick, that is the, the best. But when you do, then you can manage it with natural products and natural things um, because there are so many of them out there. So essential oils is one of these ways in which you can manage and you can treat and you can kind of soothe symptoms that you have of some kind of a, a problem or a disease. So, <clears throat> first of all, uh, essential oil is a part of a plant that's taken and combined with the carrier oil, and then mixed, put in a bottle, and then it's for consumption, for use. So it's either internal uh, external or topical or it's put into uh, into a vapor just to make a vapor like in a, a nebulizer or a humidifier that you put it into a vapor into the, the air you can also add it to a bath for example you get some rubs that you can rub onto your temples specific areas um, you can also just use it any anywhere on your body like as a topical cream especially if it's a specific spot that you want to get to so a lot depends on the carrier oil and a lot depends on the the oil from the plant so there are many factors that influence the essential oil so it's the growth the soil the cultivation the sun the light the water the nutrients in the soil it all affects the potency of the oil it's also different if you have the plant from the wild or cultivated plant, how it's extracted, which parts of the plant is used, how it's been preserved, like I said, the carrier oil, how it's bottled, how it's handled, how it's transported, <clears throat> how much oxygen it's been exposed to, how much sunlight it's been exposed to, how sensitive this oil is to um, the elements. So there are many factors that influence the potency. So generally essential oils are put into dropper bottles that are darkened because sunlight can affect the chemical composition of this oil. So that brings me on to the next point that I want to make is the different compositions, different chemical mixtures that are actually the active ingredients. So there are, let me just see my list, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Eight different chemical compositions that have an active part, or play an active part in this essential oil. So generally speaking, we call them terpenes and aromatic compounds, and they work a lot with your dopamine, serotonin, your nervous system, uh, and your brain. So I will go through them and then tell you how each one of these works. First, uh, esters. So esters are just a chemical composition and a name for a substance. So esters, they are antifungal, generally anti-inflammatory, antispasmodic, and they also are sedative. So I'm not going to name specific diseases or things that you can use it for, but you can think of what you would like to use those for. So an antispasmodic, so if you have a, a muscle spasm, for example, that could help. If you have cramping, um, this could help. Fungus, uh, inflammation can help the sedative. So if so you need calming, so if you're very nervous or anxious, this can calm you down. It can act as a sedative. Then you also get oxides, which are in, which is an expectorant. So removing mucus. So <clears throat> removing mucus from your lungs, from your bronchi, um, helping your lymphatic system move as well. So it also, this one stimulates your nervous system. So it oxides, they stimulate your, your nervous system. It it's brings out that mucus, it helps your, your lymphatic system move. So there are also certain spots that you need to, 
to focus on with your lymphatic system. So your lymphatic system will go around here. You'll feel nodes under here. Your tonsils are part of your lymphatic system. It will go down your neck here. So if you massage down your neck, down your, your chin here like this, and down through your mucous membranes like this, you'll feel that would start draining your mucus. And the same with here under your arms, down here. Then there's a part that goes centrally down your spine and then splits into your two legs. So those rubbing down your legs would also stimulate um, lymphatic drainage and then massaging or rubbing on your calves that would also then work on your lymphatic system. So then the next one, lactones. So lactones are uh, antiviral, antipyretic, so it brings down a fever, uh, analgesic, so it takes away some pain. So these are very good for pain and fevers. Then you also get alcohols. So the alcohol is just a group with an OH bond on it. It's not alcohol that you would then drink, but uh, alcohols are spasmolytics, so they also help with spasms. The antimicrobial vasodilator, it's a general tonic for your body and also anti-inflammatory. So I stress again, this is not the same as alcohol that you can buy from a shop. This is just the chemical composition. Then you also get phenols, which are anti-inflammatory. They help stimulate your immune system to function like it should. Uh, it's also anesthetic, so it takes away pain, it, it, it um, suppresses pain, and antimicrobial. So there are many things that are antimicrobial, so those are the bacteria, the viruses, the microbes that they help to remove from your body and to help to kill. So that is always something that you really want to look out for, that you want to use. Then you also get aldehydes, which are antiviral. They act as a vasodilator, so it brings and opens up your your vessels and your veins all over your body. It's also a calming and a sedative and an antipyretic. So antipyretic means it, it brings down a fever. So it makes things less hot. So it brings down a fever. And with a fever, it's really only your brain that's so sensitive to a fever. The rest of your body can handle differences in temperatures and e even extremely high temperatures, whereas your brain cannot. So you need to keep your brain cool, but the rest of your body you can make hot to then uh, modulate and mediate the fever response because the fever response is there to actually remove the, the microbe or the bacteria or the virus from your body that is causing the problem. Then the last one is ketones. So they're mucolytic, so they also help to bring out mucus and remove mucus, and they help to regenerate your cells. So they increase and help uh, cell regeneration. They're also antiviral, but just a note here, they can be neurotoxic. Your brain does not like ketones. So just be aware, be aware of those and be mindful of those. So that is the kind of overview about essential oils, so how you can use them. Um, just be very careful that you don't use them in the, the wrong way. So an essential oil that is meant for topical use should not be ingested. An essential oil that is meant to be vaporized should not be then used in a different way. So be careful with ingestion. Do not ingest um, any essential oils. Be sure to know which one it is and if you can use it internally. So you can also just use the pure plant to then ingest. For example, you get cinnamon oils or chamomile oils or nutmeg or cloves. Those you can eat, same as with garlic. Garlic, you get an oil, essential oil, but you can also just consume the garlic. The oil is just a very purified, much stronger form. So I hope this has been informative. It has helped you to know a little bit more about essential oils. As always, to God be the glory and stay healthy.